Hey everybody, this is Kathy from Whole Home and Body Health, and today I'm going to shoot a video on the EMF levels in a Ford 250 pickup truck. Now, I have heard from many EMF sensitive people that Ford pickups, uh, Ford pickup 250, has actually been really good for them and has been fairly low in EMF and low on their symptoms. So I have a work truck here that I'm going to test. I'm actually here in um, Ganado, Arizona on a work project. So just happen to have this Ford F-250 that I can test and we're gonna see what kind of levels we get. Okay, so for this test, I'm gonna use my NFA 1000 to test the electric and magnetic fields. I'm going to use my Safe and Sound Pro 2 to test the radio frequency. And then I'm gonna use this inexpensive AM FM radio to see if I can capture any of the uh, dirty electricity. Now that's not gonna be an exact measurement because we're just going off of sound, but I thought it would be a good measurement because with these big trucks, well, any car really, I am concerned about the dirty electricity. And usually we're not measuring that because we don't, we can't really quantify the measurement. We don't have an outlet to plug into, for example. Um, but the noise on the, on the uh, radio, I'm hoping is gonna give us some information. All right, so let's get right to it. All right, so here I am in the truck. It's pretty warm, so I'm gonna roll down the window real quick. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna see what happens with the AM radio when I uh, put the key in the ignition. So like I said, this is just a really inexpensive AM FM radio. The way that we do this is we turn it on and, and we, t we put it on AM and we tune it down to the lowest number just so that we can hear the static. So we don't want a radio station, we just want static and you can hear that I'm just picking up static. So if I put the key in the ignition, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Uh -huh. So you can hear that the radio is picking up that interference. Now, if I start the ignition, it's not too bad. So I'm just gonna kind of move it around the cab and sorry that it might be a little difficult to see. All right, so I'm gonna move it around. You can see there's a little near the dash. Passenger seat. Definitely increases as we go under the dashboard. How about the driver's seat? Yeah. So you can see it in, in here that it increases. So again, that's just a really rudimentary um, measurement, but you can hear it. And um, that's what I would have expected um, is that for some of these levels to be a little high because we've got all these motors turning and um, that's pretty typical. So next, uh, you know, and I'm just idling right now. Um, I'm gonna see what the magnetic field level is. And just hanging out here, let's show you this. Now remember, guys, this is a work truck. This is not my car, right? I, I like clean cars, so this is a work truck, cr truck so please excuse the mess. Uh, so for magnetic fields, not really getting much. Actually, let me turn the engine off. So I was getting a little, but you know, practically nothing. So I have pretty much no magnetic fields um, in this area. And I just let the car idle. That was right when I turned the ignition. Let's see if I just turn it on. So a little 0.4 actually, just on the console with the engine running. Um, if I put it in the driver's seat, let's see what happens. 0.2. Looks like we're gonna increase as we go towards the dashboard here. Yeah, so higher on the dashboard. So if you're a passenger, you're gonna get a little bit up to one milligauss from 
you know, on the floor and near the dashboard. Uh, for the driver, point two with the steering wheel. The radio's higher. That's pretty typical. Let's see if we can get down by my feet. One point three. That's high. And remember, we're not moving. So we're gonna. I'm gonna attempt to test this while we are driving, but I want to be safe about it. So almost three, right where the gas pedal is. That's high. Yeah, so three over in this area. And then the back seat. Not much happening in the back seat here. All right, now I'm testing the electric fields. The engine is not on. I don't have any electric fields happening. So when I turn the car on. That increases a bit, fluctuates between about 0.5 up to 1, and let's see what happens on the passenger side. Not not much going on there. 0.2, no, no big deal really. Alright, not much going on down here. Uh, when, I, when I accelerate, I expect this number to change. Yeah, so, so not much going on for electric fields until, it, that is, I start driving. And then for radio frequency, sorry, I know that the placement of this is not great because the big old steering wheel's in my way, but I'm gonna turn on my Safe and Sound Pro and... Wow, that's quite loud. Let me turn off the engine. Huh. So that was interesting. You can hear a lot of cell tower in the background. That's primarily what I'm picking up. And the cell tower I'm getting is about, it's fluctuating up to around 100 microwatts per square meter. I, I think that the meter's probably flashing, which is difficult to see. But I, I'm getting, my highest peak is 135. There's a cell tower off in the distance. But, but let's see what happens when I um, turn that ignition back on. So, the ignition is on, and let me start the car now. So that high pitch, I'm not sure, it certainly seemed like, it, there it is. Hmm. So, man, that's annoying. That's up to about... 723 sounds like Bluetooth to me. I'm gonna turn the sound off because that's really annoying. Um, what I suspect this may be is this device here, which is some kind of tracking device um, that the car uses, I think, for insurance purposes. So I'm gonna turn this sound back on and see if I unplug it, what happens. Nothing. See what happens if I move this thing out of the car. So that device is way far away. I unplugged it, I put it um, about 30 feet away. Um, and it doesn't, it, it seems like I'm not getting that signal now. So I'm guessing that that was probably it. And without that, I'm back hovering between 50 and 100 microwatts per square meter from the cell tower. So um, that's a good lesson uh, for anybody that's curious about these trackers. 
Uh, it seems to me to be working off of Bluetooth and or some kind of radio frequency and um, that was a pretty high exposure so that's what those do I'm sure they're all different but just uh, you know a heads up for anybody that wants to use those um, you know mileage trackers or insurance trackers uh, that you know a lot of these companies are trying to sell you okay so now let's go for a drive and see if our levels change at all all right everybody I am driving around and I'm backing up right now so this is difficult to see but you can hear that the magnetic field increases a little bit as I accelerate. Not a ton, about 0.5. So this is up to 0.6-ish on the passenger side seat, so that's not too bad. Now I'm going to put it on the up, there's a little bit, it's a little up to 0.9 almost, uh, which is what we had before when we were just idling. So I'm going to put it on the seat now and see what happens. I'm sorry, I'm going to put it on the floor. Alright, so we have our one up to 1.8 and I'm going to get on the highway and see what happens. All right, so as I'm accelerating on the highway, it's getting up there pretty high, seven, eight milligauss. That's quite high. So if you're a passenger and your feet are on the floor, you're getting a pretty good dose. So let's see what's going on on the driver's side. All right, so now the driver's side, very difficult to see, I wanna be safe. So I'm just gonna tell you what's going on here because I, I don't want to get into an accident here. But it's going up pretty darn high. Let's see if I can show you. I'm accelerating up a hill. And it is up to four milligauss or so. That's pretty high. Especially for an EMS sensitive person. Too high in my opinion. Okay, so now I'm doing the electric fields. Same thing upon acceleration. Electric fields on the driver's side floor, actually really low, surprisingly. And now I will put it on the passenger side. All right, passenger side seat, electric fields as I'm accelerating. Eight, which is um, higher than we want, but lower than I see in most cars for electric fields. And now I'll put it on the floor. So electric fields on the floor of the passenger side, also pretty low. So that's good. Okay, so I just got done driving around um, and the results are the electric fields were quite low, the magnetic fields fairly elevated, seven to eight milligauss on the driver's side or the passenger side floor, up to four on the driver's side floor. Uh, that's, that's pretty high. But um, not unheard of in vehicles. I didn't get any radio frequency once I um, figured out the mileage tracker. It did not keep emitting as I drove, and that's irrelevant because you, you know if you don't have a mileage tracker, no big deal. So I didn't get any radio frequencies. Um, as I continued to drive, I did get a little of the dirty electricity, as would be expected. Uh, but you know, again, I can't quantify it either, just the sound. So that's probably pretty normal. Uh, so if you are EMF sensitive uh, and a Ford F-250 works for you, um, it could be because the electric fields are pretty low, no radio frequency. And I, you know, this is an older truck. In fact, I, I don't even know how old this truck is. I'll try to find that out for you. And it is a 2012. I just looked up the owner's manual here. Ford F-250 2012, if you wanted to know. But, so, no radio frequency devices in the car at all. It's pretty stripped down. Uh, just a plain old radio with a CD player. So, it's definitely older. Um, electric field's pretty low, but those magnetic fields are elevated. Not necessarily more elevated than other vehicles, though. So, uh, like I said, many EMF-sensitive people find that this kind of truck works for them. And I would never say that it is safe unless you test it yourself. 
The key here is that you always have to test yourself to see how you react because you are different than everybody else. And so it all depends on how you physically feel. So if you're going to buy a vehicle, you always got to test it uh, for yourself. Drive around with it. If you can keep it for a day or two, drive around and see how you feel. That's the best option. But otherwise, um, it, you know, tested, I guess, pretty good for a car because cars are always fairly high, but I am concerned about those elevated magnetic fields. Those are um, a little higher than I would like to see. So that's it for my review of this uh, Ford 250 pickup truck. If you found that helpful, uh, please let me know. Ask any questions below. Please subscribe to my channel if you hit the bell uh, below. That will tell you when I release new videos. And I will see you all next time. Bye. Thank you.